So back at Computex, I visited the Deepcool GamerStorm booth and saw this guy, the Fryzen CPU cooler for Threadripper. As second generation Threadripper CPUs were rolled out at that event, we saw a few beefed up coolers at booths here and there, but this one definitely caught my eye. And the reason for that is because it goes for that sort of gamery aesthetic. And I'm not really sure if it was serious enough to call a 16 core, 24 core, or even a 32 core, Threadripper CPU. So we will be comparing Fryzen against a few other popular Threadripper cooling options to see how this thing actually stacks up. And pricing is roughly equal to the other options that we're comparing it against today. Currently going on Amazon US for $89. Oddly enough, that positions it slightly more expensive than the Noctua U14S. As all TR4 CPU coolers should, we've got that full die cold plate at the bottom with Fryzen using nickel plated copper. And there's six heat pipes that make their way through both ends of that aluminum fin stack. We're only working with a single 120 millimeter fan here. And one thing I'm not totally sure about is the frame covering roughly 25% of the fan's surface area. This most likely introduces turbulence, an increase in noise levels, and likely a reduction in cooling performance. But we'll take a look at the numbers in just a minute. Otherwise, the cooler is built pretty well and feels very solid with an all aluminium trim, so that's definitely appreciated. The actual purpose of that frame is for RGB illumination, of course, with two lighting elements on either side, and there's additional RGB lighting at the top of the cooler, which will be visible in your system when the cooler is installed. The lighting is compatible with ASUS, MSI, ASRock, and Gigabyte's RGB lighting software as well, if you do care to sync it up and program the lighting on your board. Otherwise, there's an included RGB controller in the box. One other strong point for Fryzen is when it comes to compatibility. The CPU cooler height is measured at 165 millimeters, so it is one of the taller CPU coolers on the stack, but you're not going to have any issues when it comes to clearance of your memory modules or your top PCI Express slot, seeing as the cooler isn't that long or wide. Now let's take a look at some of the competition. First up is Cooler Master's beast of a cooler, the Wraith Ripper. Simply put, this thing is an absolute tank and is the largest CPU cooler that we'll be testing today. With a cooler height of 160 millimeters, it is five millimeters shorter than the Fryzen, but it is much longer and wider. The design here is two fin stacks separated by a 120 millimeter fan in the middle and actually sandwiching the fan into the heatsink this way reduced noise pretty significantly as we'll see soon in our testing. The entire heatsink is also black, which some of you may prefer, and there's also some RGB lighting on the casing around the frame in the middle. The seven heat pipes here also, so an additional one pipe over Fryzen. And honestly, looking at this thing, it's hard to think that little Fryzen could even compete. Next up is Noctua's U14S TR4, which is the only CPU cooler here to utilize 140 mm fans. The rest use 120. The fan is the 140 mm NFA15 PWM, and you can technically add a second one here to the heatsink, but I'd strongly advise against that, and I'll show you what I mean in the noise results in just a minute. Overall, I've had some pretty good results with this cooler in the past, so it'll be great to see how this cooler stacks up against the other options. One issue that I do have with this cooler though is that it overhangs the top PCI Express slot on the X399 motherboard that I'm using here, the Zenith Extreme. And this was even after using the adjustments on the mounting bracket. So if you're thinking of using this one, definitely do a bit of research on compatibility before buying. Otherwise, we've got six heat pipes here also and CPU cooler height is identical to Fryzen at 165 millimeters. Okay, and lastly, we have a very popular AIO, especially designed for Threadripper with the larger cold plate, the Animax Lick Tech 240. Do note that a 280 millimeter version is available also, but I don't have that one here for testing at this point. Whenever I test an X399 board on this channel, this is always the cord that I end up reaching for. Mounting is super easy and I always have a solid experience with this thing. So again, it'll be very interesting to see how this stacks up to the air cooled options. So the CPU that we're using today is the Threadripper 2950X, the 16 core 32 thread CPU in AMD's second generation Threadripper stack. Now with the 32 core model suffering from large memory latencies in certain workloads, this will probably be the chip that most people actually reach for. And although I would have loved to test that 32 core 2990WX for these coolers, I think the 2950X serves as a more realistic use case anyway. All right, so let's finally talk about installation and then get to those results. 
Now, installation here is slightly more involved compared to the other coolers which have the mounting brackets pre-installed and ready to go for that TR4 socket mounting. But since Fryzen can also be used with the AM4 socket, you're required to use an extra mounting bracket between the cooler and the socket. No problems here though, as it was super simple, just an extra step that you'll need to take. There's a four pin header for the PWM fan and then two separate three pin RGB cables for the RGB illumination. I plugged these directly into the board via a three pin header. There's plenty of accessories and controls included though, but I'm personally more interested in the cooling performance, which speaking of, let's finally look at how that 2950X did at stock clock speeds. So here, all CPU coolers actually did pretty well with the 2950X sitting at around 3.6 to 3.7 gigahertz at 1.15 volts. A typical clock speed and voltage when plugging that chip into a decent X399 motherboard. Here, Fryzen is at the bottom of the stack though, with a result of 60 degrees C at a fan speed of 1750 RPM, but closing in on Cooler Master's Wraith Ripper at 2150. The other coolers are slightly more capable here though, with Wraith Ripper finishing up at 51 degrees C. Noctua did quite well here also, but the Enemax Liquitec 240 does take the lead, able to cool the 16 core chip below 50 degrees C. With the 2950X overclocked though, it does take a turn for the worst for Fryzen. At 1750rpm it wasn't able to adequately cool the Threadripper chip to stop it from thermally throttling, but at 2150rpm it does get the job done, but just. Keep in mind here that all results reflect an ambient room temperature of 20 degrees C. So for warmer setups or possibly within a case, Fryzen isn't looking so good for an overclocked 2950X. The Noctua U14S with two 140mm fans was able to beat the Wraith Ripper from Cooler Master though, but again, the Liquitec 240 does prove to be the most effective cooling solution. Looking at noise levels now, and there really is quite a variance here between the quietest and the loudest result. The quietest cooling solution here was the Noctua U14S with a single fan, and that's to be expected given Noctua's reputation when it comes to outstanding acoustics, but also because the larger fan doesn't need to spin as fast, only at 1200 RPM here. We then take a significant 5 dBA jump up to Wraith Ripper at 2000 RPM, Roughly the same as the U14S with two fans, although my experience running the two NFA15 fans was not so great here at all, resulting in an off buzzing sound possibly created by turbulence. I'll let you guys take a look. Fryzen isn't too bad at 1750 RPM, but does suffer at 2150. My recommendations here are just to stick with 1750 RPM if possible, since that 6 dBA jump is quite significant. The AIO was the loudest in the stack though, given that we have two 120mm fans at full blast here, but do note that being a liquid cooler, it does have the capacity to run at lower RPMs, and you could also swap those radiator fans to Noctua's NFA 12x25s to fix those otherwise loud fans from Enemax. So Fryzen, is it a meme or is it actually not bad? Well, with the Threadripper 2950X at stock clock speeds, I was actually pretty surprised how close this thing came uh, to the Coolmaster Wraith Ripper at 2150 RPM and even 1750 it was able to call that chip not too bad at all. If you insist on running your Threadripper CPU with an overclock though, Fryzen unfortunately is not going to cut it. If you're looking for the best solution possible, I'd be looking at Enemax's Liquitec 240 or 280mm AIO. And if acoustics are an issue there, I'd highly recommend switching to Noctua's NFA 12x25. You can find a review of those in the top right hand corner. For air cooling, both the Wraith Ripper and the Noctua U14S performed quite similarly, with the Noctua cooler providing much better performance in terms of noise levels. So guys, let me know what you think of Deepcool's new Fryzen Threadripper cooler, and if you think this thing did a little bit better than you expected. Also, if you are running a Threadripper build at the moment, I'm really interested to know what cooler you're running in your build. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next one.